Hello friends, and welcome back to the channel. With me today in the studio, the one, the only, Karen Grill from Collective 1806. So excited to have you, Karen. Thanks welcome. for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Would you like to tell us a little bit about Collective 1806, who you are and where you guys come from? Sure. Uh, Collective 1806 is a group of brand ambassadors and educators that look after the Remy Quantro portfolio in the US and beyond. So Karen, you want to make some holiday cocktails with me today? Yay! Yeah? Boy, do I. Let's do it. Awesome. Great. Well, let's get started. Punch for me is like a, a baker in a kitchen, right? Like yeah. you know, sharing the love with family or friends, what have you. And you make a punch in advance because you're you're expecting company mm -hmm. and this the whole idea of punch is community and communal. Yeah. Yeah. Rather have a punch that I've already made and it's mm -hmm. already ready to go. It looks beautiful. Yeah. It's inviting for a guest when they walk in instead of having me behind a bar like, oh yeah, I'll be with you. Like, oh, I really want to see you, but I'm busy, you know? Yeah, so here's, you know, yeah. here's something I've got for you. Check it out and yeah. then uh, I'll get back to you when I can. But this punch actually, so this punch is a little bit of citrus oleosaccharum, botanist gin, some Remy, Remy Martin in here. Some yeah. Remy 1738, the so Royal. And then we've got some Mr. Black coffee look here in there and yeah. some champs, little champers. Yeah, little shampoo. Champs. Why not? <laughs> but this is actually reminiscent of a punch that you made when we mm -hmm. uh, we competed against each same other. Same recipe. Is yeah. it really? Well, I mean, same basic. <laughs> thing, right? I have one punch recipe. Mm -hmm. There's many different punches out there. This is my favorite. It's yeah. OABV. It's really mm -hmm. like kind of, they get a lot of the citrus oils yeah, that absolutely. just make you want to have another sip. It's well diluted, but there's lots of beautiful, you know, effort, effervescence from the bubbles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it is the same basic profile. Yeah. Obviously different ingredients. You know, anytime somebody's like, oh, I need to make a punch for something. I'm like, I've sent you the recipe. Just what's your What's your general punch spec? Because sure. I, I know I've got mine. Yeah, all right, well, I'll share mine if you share yours. Deal. <laughs> yeah, so my, my go-to punch recipe is uh, one part of citrus, mm -hmm. um, a quarter part of oleosaccharum. That's absolutely, I feel like, the essential mm -hmm. building block of a good punch. There's one part of a spirit of your choosing where you can break it in half like we did today. Half a part or to a three-quarter part of some modifier, right? So either Amaro or uh, you know Quattro or something like a liqueur or Mr. Yeah. Black. And then depending on how much, what the bricks level is at, the rest of that quarter to a half ounce of simple syrup or yeah. some sort of, some sort of spice syrup. Um, and then I usually do about an out, like a part and a half to two parts of dilution with water, and then just top up with bubbles. <laughs> top yeah. up with all the bubbles you can, just like a, Sasha would say, right? And as yeah. as the punch starts to get lower, you just keep pouring champagne on top. I'm pretty sure you're just drinking champagne. Which is never <laughs> a bad thing. Never a bad yeah. thing. All right, your punch my, recipe. My punch recipe is not too dissimilar from mm -hmm. yours. Just uh, sort of the 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 parts. Yeah. So mine, pretty easy to remember. I do one and a half, three quarters, half, half, half. So okay. that one and a half, it could be uh, one spirit only, it could be split into two, so three quarter, three quarter. And then I'll do three quarters of that a citrus element, be it actual citrus or oleo. Sure. And then half, 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 I'll usually, you know, you can do three different things or split them across, but you know, it, it it's usually a liqueur. Sure. And then some sort of spiced element or vermouth. So those half, half, half are meant for modifiers. And right. then I'll do uh, that same one and a half with uh, bubbles and then dilution. Um, so anyways, uh, I guess we should just let you know what's in this beautiful punch if you'd like sure. to make it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and keep in mind, we're gonna we're gonna talk talk in terms of parts. Um, and that you, way you can make a punch for two or one. Yeah, exactly. You can literally make this as a single cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, so in this cocktail, we do have one quarter part of oleosaccharum, which is basically the expression of lemon oils uh, through sugar maceration. The best part of oleosaccharum though is that even if you don't have all the fancy tools, uh, I've done pretty well with uh, any citrus peels that I have lying around. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have enough lemons, you can mix in some grapefruit, some yep. orange, maybe some lime, some Meyer lemon if you got them. Uh, you floral. Can, yeah, you can yeah. put it in a Ziploc actually and just make sure you sort of squeeze the Ziploc and mm -hmm. get all that uh, sugar sort of uh, oily uh, so that it can start pulling it all out. But, yeah, and if you leave it in a warmer part of your home too, like if you, you know, I have a microwave that's right over my oven, right? So like that microwave just kind of gets warm if we have the oven on at all. So you leave it in there and it'll kind of, that heat will help speed up the process. And then we have one part of fresh citrus. We're using lemon, uh, fresh lemon juice for this, but you can use uh, other citrus if you'd like. And a half ounce of Mr. Black Cold Brew liqueur, mm -hmm. obviously. Obviously. A quarter ounce of Cointreau. 
And then a quarter ounce of banana liqueur. Oh, just ties the room together. So well. We're gonna use half a part of botanist dry gin. Incredibly versatile gins that always somehow made it into my cocktails when I was bartending. So it has a very standard nine core botanicals that a majority of gins have. Uh, but what's really special about this is that it is an Isla dry gin. So Isla being an island off the coast of Scotland and all of the uh, botanicals that make it into the gin come from Isla, which is really special. They Needless to it say, <laughs> it's absolutely my favorite dry gin. Yeah. It's always in my home bar. And mm -hmm. if it's not, it's because it's been consumed and I need to buy, I need to re-up. Throw in a half part of Remy Martin. And then I usually add one and a half parts of dilution, usually with water. And then one and a half parts of bubbles. Any kind of bubbles. Any we bubbles. Used, we used uh, Prosecco. We used Prosecco. But you can use Cava, you can use Champagne. I really wonder what uh, like a sparkling uh, Lambrusco would, uh, would do to this cocktail. Please give that a try and report back to us. Let Put us it in the know. comments down below and right we there. will definitely check them out. So <laughs> um, yeah, so there it is, the holiday punch and its beautiful festiveness. Cheers. Cheers. All right, up next, we have a hot cocktail, which I absolutely love and it's great for the season, called Island Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Island Time is a, it's a thing, you know? Not everything has to run on such a strict schedule. If you're on Island Time, it's, you're not late. It's just casual. Like today. It's Island yeah, Time. We're, it's definitely Island Time today. <laughs> so tell us what's in Island Time. So Island Time, Starts out with a couple dashes of Angostura's cacao bitters, which I tasted for the first time today, and they are ridiculous. They crushed I, it. I love it. A half an ounce of runny honey. So that's uh, two to one parts uh, honey with some hot water. Is my uh, is my Australian adjacent showing with a runny yeah, honey? Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, you're you're close enough. You live with with an Aussie, so well, Aussie born. New Zealand bred, but yeah, got wiped up to a Pacific Islander. Yeah, one of the <laughs> dopest people on the planet. Absolute legend. He's pretty great. Up. He's pretty, he's all right. He's pretty yeah, great. He's probably watching. Which but is yeah, I think, I think uh, runny honey sounds a lot better than honey syrup, two to one. <laughs> and then equal parts, so three quarters and three quarters of Mr. Black and Mount Gay, Black Barrel with a brand new master blender comes brand new packaging. So we uh, at Mount Gay have our first female master blender, Trudy Ann Branker, uh, the first female master blender since 1703. So and it's she's been- She's crushing it. Is crushing it. You've tasted me now on something that she's blended and I've, I've tasted two other uh, like, non-release stuff yet and mm -hmm. everything is really spectacular so yeah she's put she's put uh, a new sort of spin on the blends every master blender obviously has their own blend <laughs> you get you get a bit more of those uh really nuanced uh sort of deep baked spice and uh, molasses flavors and then we're gonna top this off with some fresh arabica coffee yes only Absolutely. arabica coffee 100 <laughs> percent delicious and not woody or bitter And we're going to top this off with some fresh cinnamon. Oh yeah, some grated cinnamon. Also ties the room together. Ties the cocktail yep. together. Yep. The aroma, the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. There it is. Island time. Island time. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. For the next cocktail, <laughs> it's a little banger variation on the revolver cocktail. We're going to build this in a mixing glass. And we'll start off with two ounces of the Westland Sherry Wood Whiskey. So Karen, you need to tell me how this particular bottle is so delicious. Like, what is it about the Sherry Wood Westland that just sings? Well, Sherry Wood's a fan favorite. I mean, as a scotch drinker, I'm a really big fan of uh, scotch whiskeys that are aged in sherry barrels, and this one is no exception. With this one, the, uh, the liquid in bottle is aged in two kinds of uh, sherry hogsheads and butts. There's Pedro Jimenez and a little bit of Oloroso. And then it also sees time in two 
uh, separate Washington style uh, virgin oak cast. So it, it gets all of those beautiful sort of jammy flavors from both the Pedro Jimenez and the Oloroso, but then also that really, really beautiful like oakiness to it. And then we'll add one ounce of Mr. Black Cobra liqueur. With a quarter ounce of Cointreau. Love Cointreau. So good. We'll add ice and stir. and garnish with an orange peel. John Sanchez's recipe of the, of the revolver obviously is a great build and it's a fun cocktail to play with, with this whiskey and with Mr. Black. Mm -hmm. And I think it uh, there's something really special about a really simple three ingredient cocktail. There is not a ton of commitment. You're not gonna have to go out and grab a bunch of bottles. It's three bottles, you know, one of which Montreux. That should probably be a staple in your home bar anyway, yeah. uh, as well you as like Mr. Mar Black. <laughs> you like margaritas, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's just, it's it's a really simple cocktail that packs a punch or a bang because it's a rip on a revolver. So there it is. Enjoy. <laughs> Cheers. Great. So for the last cocktail today, it is eggnog season and it wouldn't be a holiday or a festive occasion without a good eggnog. So why not? Oh, eggnog. It's so, so good. good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, real quickly, we're going to show you how to make an eggnog that's just one drink at a time. So an a la menu eggnog, that way you don't have to make a whole bunch of it. There are other methods. You can, you can make a huge batch and you can pasteurize it with heat so you can keep it for indefinitely, really. You can age your eggnog if you like in the fridge. But this is a fresh eggnog that you can make in the glass. So. Anyways, in a cocktail shaker, we're gonna go ahead and start off by adding equal parts, equal parts simple syrup, heavy whipping cream, Amaro Nonino, one part Remy Martin, In one part, Mr. Black Cobra liqueur. And then we'll add just a pinch of kosher salt. And then we'll go ahead and give this cocktail a really good shake with ice. Once you've done that, you've strained off that, all the ice chips, we're gonna go ahead and put it back in the tin with one full egg and emulsify that with a nice whip shake. And then you can put that right into a chilled coupe glass. And garnish with some fresh nutmeg. And there it is, really delicious eggnog, coffee with cognac at last. So delicious. It's so good. Yeah. I um, I actually never had eggnog until I started bartending. That's I, bizarre. Well, okay, so I'm Jewish, so right. eggnog and Christmas is but not- But you didn't have a grocery store that just had a whole fridge full of them? Yeah, but in like December? The, the look of, oh. of a big gallon of nog never really appealed to me. <laughs> fair, but, fair, fair. But you know, yeah. I mean- when, I guess you have to be indoctrinated and do it, right? I guess, right. I mean, Hanukkah is about fried food. Latkes are the world's greatest hash browns. And, they are very you tasty. Know, that, that was more my thing. I remember the first place I had an eggnog. Where at? It was made by Naomi Levy okay. at Eastern Standard in Boston, no way. right outside of uh, where the Red Sox played. So. Well, that sounds 
very more magical than my It was really time. magical. Snow falling, Naomi <laughs> behind the bar, Jackson Cannon might have been there too. But <laughs> I'm sure he was. One of my favorite bars in this country, and I really, really, really hope that they make it through the cold weather season. Same, same. So, um, you're going to teach me how to. Oh yeah. Do the dreidel, right? Is, is it, do you do the dreidel? Do you, spin <laughs> you, the dreidel? you play dreidel. You, you play spin dreidel. Dreidel. All right. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar or uh, are not Jewish, we've got a tradition on Hanukkah uh, to play dreidel. So to spare you the long, the long story, basically this little thing is what helped bring about uh, a good end to the Hanukkah story. But so on each side of the dreidel, there are four sides, there's a different letter. And this is sort of a gambling game. Uh, usually in Jewish homes, you play with these little guys. They're called gelt, chocolate coins. Uh, but sometimes you can play for money or not. Drinking game? Can you turn it into a drinking game? Or yeah. is that sacrilegious? Uh, no, you can okay. turn it, right. anything can be a drinking game okay. if you do All it right. responsibly. True, true, true. So uh, yeah, so every, I know that you can't read this, but you know, we'll One of them looks like pie. One of them looks <laughs> like a, a lady's high heel. <laughs> So they, they stand for a sentence. Uh, in Hebrew, it is nes gadol hayasham, uh, which translates to a uh, great miracle happened there. So nes gadol hayasham. So if you get this little guy, the nun, uh, you do nothing. So okay. normally you'll start out, everybody puts some coins in the sure, pot sure. or a drink in the pot. So if you get this, um, you get nothing. If you get, if you get this, nothing happens, next turn. Okay. If you get this one, the gimel high heel. for yeah. gadol, yes. sure. Uh, maybe Italy? Okay, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sure. Uh, that means you get it all. So you oh, get everything in the pot, that's or the one. you drink, you do the things. Hey, for Haya, uh, is you get half. Mm. So you split the pot. Okay. And then Shin, Shum, uh, you put something else into oh, the pot. Oh man, that's not the one. No, no wonder, that's not no the one. No wonder you weren't happy earlier when we, we were tossing this, that was the only <laughs> thing that popped up. I know, I was, I was landing on Shin's, whoa, buddy. Who's doing that? There, there's the Martin Hudak right All right, there, let's yeah. go, let's go, let's go. What we got? Shin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, do it for all the marbles. For, for oh! The, for the leftover punch. Yeah, for the leftover punch. So it's a little flick. Mmm. Yep. Come on. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. I made you out of play. Oh! Mm, I got nothing. a nun. Got nothing, nothing. But I don't give any, I don't take any. It's fine. Yep. Yeah, so that's how to play. Stefan, thanks so much for having me today. This was so much fun. I haven't gotten to do a round of cocktails in a really long time. It's really awesome to see you, and it's really great to make <laughs> great drinks always with it's you. That's true. So Karen, you were telling me offline that one of your brands just got B Corp status. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, actually two of our brands, okay. technically. My but, apologies. <laughs> no, I mean, they're made at the same place, so it's a little confusing. But uh, the B Corp, uh, B Corporation status is very exciting. But so uh, for a company to be certified as a B Corp, uh, they need to be making significant uh, decisions within their organization to better their community, uh, the lives of their employees and the environment around them. So Bruglotti, our uh, Isla whiskey. And Which we didn't get to play with today, but it's super <laughs> delicious. Highly recommend that Port Charlotte mm -hmm. for sure. So delicious. Uh, but yeah, check that out if you haven't had Brugletti before. But uh, the distillery is in the same place as Botanist Gin. Correct. So both of them have certified as B Corporations. I believe that there are only six spirit distilleries globally that have certified as a B Corp. And Brugletti is one of only two whiskey distilleries. Uh, there's one in the US, but it... Uh, Bruglotti and The Botanist are the only two gin and whiskey distilleries in the European Union. That's amazing. Yeah, so they've made significant changes to uh, fair livable wages and uh, processes that will reuse wastewater uh, and reduce waste in general uh, from the distillery. So It's such a cool thing to yeah. see the legends out there, how they just breathe, breathe life into an old distillery and what they're doing with it now that's magical. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody for watching today. Uh, if you like what you see here, leave some comments down below on videos you might want to see in the future. If you'd like to see Karen come back, maybe we'll do another episode in the future. Let me know.
<laughs> yeah, um, I'm sure that we just will. We'll just do it and we'll bring Mitch along. It'll be a whole thing. Let's bring Mitch along. Let's bring Mitch along. And if you want to see what we're doing over at Collective 1806, you can find us on Instagram at at C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-F 1806. There it is. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Until next time, be well, drink great coffee and delicious cocktails, and be good humans. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy these videos as much as we enjoy making them. Please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps our channel grow. And if you have questions about coffee cocktails, leave them down in the comment section down below. And click all over the screen for more excellent content from Mr. Black. Cheers, y'all.